This lesson stemmed from a 7th grade math problem where they've got some X and Y data. You need to figure out a line of best fit. So we're going to do that three ways. Maybe some trial and error. Um, maybe Solver, which is a tool in Excel. It's nice to know how to use. And Trend Lines. So first thing I'm going to do here is plot the data. So I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to say chart. Whoops. Chart. Scatter. Straight line. So I've got the, the data points here. A um, <clears throat> couple things to maybe see this better. I'm going to format the axis. So I really don't need a minimum of uh, zero. Maybe a 110 would be good. Maximum 250 is okay. So here I here I've plotted this. I'm gonna say format data series line. Instead of automatic, I'm gonna put no line. Just so we see the points. So there are my data points. So let's try to figure out a line of best fit here. So guess what I'll do is we all know the equation y equals m times x plus b or m is the slope, y is the or b is the y-intercept so I'm going to put m equals b equals go ahead and uh, justify that <clears throat> what I'm going to do here is going to take a wild guess at first. So if I just look at my data, it looks like the uh, for every one unit x roughly goes up. I don't know. I'm going to guess 15 right now. Just a wild guess. I'm going to put slopes 15. If I eyeball this graph, I might say the y-intercepts 125. So I'm going to put that in. Now I'm going to create some some lines or some points for that line. So I'm going to say the line of best fit, the y value equals the slope times x value plus y intercept. Now, one small point here, we're going to want to copy this down. So when we copy this down, it's not going to work right. In case you don't know, I'll show you why. So let's copy one, a few points down. Well, these don't look very good. So one thing, we need to debug that. So why does it not look very good? So here, the equation should be equals the slope, which is actually in C22, and it says C23. Let's see, when you copy down, that increments every time. So we want to use something called absolute addressing. So let's go back to the original formula. We want C22, which is where the slope is, and C23 to be used every time. So the way you can make Excel do that is you can click on the cell and on a Windows PC you hit F4, on a Macintosh you hit Command T. It puts dollar signs in front of the C and the 22, and that tells Excel that you always want to use that cell when you copy down. You need to do the same for the slope. So now, when I copy this down, I should get a little bit better results. And you can see it's a line. It's not perfect, but it kind of matches the data points. So I'll go ahead and uh, match that up. Now let's add it to our plot. So I'm going to click on my graph say chart, source data, the one graph is just called Y, so I'm going to hit add, and it says name, I'm going to put line best fit, just to abbreviate a little bit, X values, so I'm going to click on this box, and that allows me to select the X values, which are the same, click right here again, Y values, you need to know where to put those or where to get those. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click this little box, which takes me to the spreadsheet. Highlight those. 
Click the box again. So now I have a line of best fit and it shows you the source of the X and Y values and I'm just going to hit OK. So I have a line there. It's the red dots, line of best fit. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. Stretch it out. So I'm going to make this into a line. So I'm going to cl right click the data series, say format data series. And I'm going to say line. It says no line. I'm going to put I want a line. How about a red one? And I'm going to take the markers off. No, no line around the markers. See what happens. Did it work? I still have markers. Didn't want that. So let's look at it again. Format data series. Marker fill. I want to say no fill, marker line, marker style, no marker. I'm just turning them all off. So I don't have a marker. Great. <clears throat> so now, let's move this out of the way a little bit. It's kind of in my way. There's my line. It doesn't fit the data very well. So in trial and error, I could play with this and say, well, y-intercept looks a little high. How about 120? Looks a little better. You know, maybe I can tell this 112. It's looking a little better. I'm just going to leave it there for right now. So you can see I can sit here and play with this. If I go higher, bigger slope doesn't fit so well. 14, smaller slope, a little different. I can sit here and play with this all day trying to get it just right. So let's use some math. To, um, to figure this out. Okay, so what we're going to do here, let's find out what the error of the line is. So let's just say the error is the line of best fit minus the actual data. So we're going to say equals line of best fit minus actual data. And that's the error. So the error is minus 8 there. So we got a column of errors. I'm going to center it. We're going to stop here just for one second, back from a small break. So we've got the error here. They're all negatives. Um, sometimes the error will be positive. Let's try that. We'll change the slope, make it something um, a little bit steeper. How about 20? So now we have positive error. The problem with positive and negative errors, they can cancel out. We want to get a feel for how big the error is. So if you want to cancel things with sign errors. Let's go back to 16 maybe. Got some plus or minus. Let's square it. So we're going to say equals this. Use shift 6 to square the, the error. So now minus 4 squared is 16. So let's copy that down. So here's all my errors squared. I'm going to go ahead and center that. Okay, so now how about if I sum that up? Equals sum. Close that. So now I have the sum of the errors, and it's like 320. So I'll show you as this line doesn't fit as well, let's go back to 20. My error goes way up. So a better fitting line as a smaller error. So my goal here would be to minimize that error. So one thing I can do is I can use a little technique in uh, an Excel called Solver. If I don't want to sit here and play with it all night, I'll just show you how that works. So I'm going to go to the Data tab. And I need to add in Solver. So in, if you don't already have it, which I don't on this, you just go Tools, Add-ins, the solver box, say OK. Now you get a, a little button here that just popped up called solver. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, so I'm going to let solver play with this for me so I don't have to do it all day and try to figure out what the minimum error is. So I'm just going to click it. And I want to set this cell 
F18. I want to minimize it. And I would do this by changing the slope and the y-intercept. So I'm going to click the slope. I'm going to hold Control or Command down, depending if you have a PC or Mac, and click another one. That easy, and I'm going to tell Solver to solve it. So I tell it to solve. It's working on it in the background. It's going to come back with an answer, hopefully, in a minute. So it's still working. I started with kind of a pretty bad line, so it's taking a while. So now you can see this bo box popped up, and it says, do you want to put the original values back or keep solver's solution? So there's many options here, but I'm just going to hit OK. So you can see here that solver went through and it iterated using some optimization techniques and it found the, the best fit line has a slope of 13.57 y-intercept of 122.14 so that's pretty good errors minimize you remember when I put like 15 in here you know it's 450 as opposed to 42 I'm just gonna put that back so that's the solution that I came up using kind of a standard math technique up here so I made a line of best fit. So let's do something else here. Um, I'm just going to move these this line out of the way so it won't be a problem. I'm just going to put the y-intercept at, I don't know, 170 just for a moment. So remember what it was, it was 122. So another way to do this very easily without going to all the trouble I just did, but to understand how it works, we can see that you can simply click on your series here right click say add trend line it's going to ask you what kind well since we're doing linear lines I'm going to leave it on linear and say OK so I have a line there the next thing we can do is uh, if you want to see what the equation of that line is click on the trend line or right click it put format trend line and then click on options and say display equation on chart there's another thing that says display our squared value on chart so what I can do is um, click that the R squared is kind of a measure of how well the line fits the data and 0.99 is really good but if you notice here if you can see solver came up with a um, an equation that says y equals 13.571x plus 122.14 which is the exact same solution that solver came up with before and I can rerun solver it's very easy so let's go solver set that cell by changing c22 which is the slope and the y-intercept solve hopefully it'll happen a little faster this time but we're going to compare the results and you're going to see that it comes up with it's not quite done yet but it looks like the same line so I'm going to say keep solver solution and you get the same line so we're going to format text here just to make it a little bit bigger easier to read Go up to 16. Okay. So we've got two techniques for taking data and finding a line of best fit. One is kind of the long way, but you understand what's going on pretty well. The other is you just right click, add tread line, and then show the, the equation on the line. You can see you get the same coefficients are very close. So that concludes my lesson here. So we've learned absolute cell addressing learned how to add trend lines, maybe how to plot some data in Excel, and how to use Solver to optimize a problem when you're trying to find a solution and you don't know how to solve it yourself. That concludes the lesson. Thank you.